Welcome back to the Fell Engine Project, where I'm building a 3.5 inch gauge live steam locomotive to my own drawings. Over the past few weeks, as more parts have been added to the locomotive, it's gained more weight and become more awkward to move around. So on this episode, I'm making a build stand that will allow the locomotive to be positioned and rotated. What we're looking at here is one of a pair of stands which will hold either end. These will then be linked together and be attached to the locomotive. To start work over at the bandsaw, cutting 25mm square hollow section. This will form all the frame members for the stand. Once all the cutting's complete, I head over to the belt grinder, clean up all the ends, and remove the paint where I'm going to weld. parts ready, I clamp them up and start welding. I'm using the TIG welder today as it's always good to get an opportunity to practice. I could have equally used a MIG welder or even bolted these parts together. I'm using a 90 degree welding clamp today as it's a quick way to get everything square. When TIG welding, the shielding gas is usually pure argon, which is what I'm using here today. The torch is usually controlled in one of two ways, either with a button on the torch, which is just on off, or with a foot control, which allows the amperage to be adjusted as you're welding. This is what I'm using today. Once the T-section's all welded up, I use the 90 degree welding clamp to position the third leg for welding. Once one side's welded, I can pop it out of the clamp and weld the rest of the sides up on the bench and in the vise. With that done, I head over to the mill and drill out a plate, the top, starting with a pilot hole, followed by the final 15mm drill bit. Once it's been drilled out, I can weld it onto the top of the post. I use a welding magnet to position the plate as I start the weld. One note when TIG welding, the arc will draw towards a magnet, so they should always be used sparingly. Here we have the stands welded up, and I've positioned a threaded rod to see how it'll fit. From here I gave the frame a coat of paint, and now I can move on to the moving parts. Next part is a block that'll ride up and down the threaded rod. 
providing height adjustment. So first I machine it down to size with a 12mm roughing mill. Once the block's at its final size, next job is to drill a hole in the centre that will be threaded. So I swap out the collet chuck for a drill chuck. To locate the centre of the block, I use a centre finder. Starting on the first face, I locate the edge and zero the digital readout. I then move to the Y axis and repeat the process. I then move to the third face, once again locating its edge. I then press half on the digital readout, followed by the X key. This halves the distance between the two sides and gives you a centre point. Once again, I repeat this with the fourth side and the Y axis. I can then drill the hole for the tap. Once again, starting with a pilot hole, followed by an 8.5mm drill for an M10 thread. I then tap the hole using an M10 tap with a little bit of cutting oil and as always I've got the spring tapping centre and the drill chuck to centre the tap. With that done I welded a couple of flat bars on the side of them and they are ready to go and coat of paint. Here's the final parts awaiting the threaded rods and the rest of the mechanism. In the next episode we'll add the threaded rods handles to adjust the height and the mountings for the locomotive. Hopefully when this is complete it will really help with the project going forward. Thanks for watching, catch you next time.